in this video I want to go through some basics of analysing data in Motex i2 Pro. Now uh, this came about because a, a guy that's racing in our online series uh, sent me some data and asked for some tips and I have a bit of a thing that drivers um, make the same sort of common mistakes over and over again and so I went straight to the root cause of a lot of his problem um, not because uh, not because of any divine inspiration or whatever it's more just purely experience I see this so often with drivers uh, I thought I'd make a video on um, checking that out for your own data uh, and at the same time it would ha uh, it would help be a sort of tutorial on uh, getting used to um, navigating your way around this i2 program and looking at your own data so I've loaded up um, the, the lap of data that he sent me which is Donington Park and it's a 111 4 and this is what's come up on screen. Now immediately I could see the common issue that people make or the common problem that people have. If you see here brake position under hard braking is only using 50% of the brakes. <coughs> I'm making no judgement because like I say a lot of people do this it's breaking a little bit harder here but still less than 70% again further along further around the lap 60 still 67% so at no point is he making full use of the brakes there's also something else I want to show you with the brake trace but we need to look at that in a little bit more detail now what I've got laid out here, and if you've seen my introduction video to uh, like getting started with I2, you'll know that this is the standard circuit worksheet. So you've got these tabs across the top, graph, gauges, mixture, scatter, etc, etc, etc. Last one, section times, which we had a little look at in the last video. Now I'm going to put an extra one in here, so I'm going to put a new worksheet. I'm not going to call it brakes because I, I like to analyse brakes a lot. I think this most of people's issues are with the brakes, especially when they're sort of starting out. I'm going to add a time distance graph. Okay, and from the channels tab, I'm going to double click brake position. So that I can get a better look at his braking. Okay, so now it becomes very obvious that in for this driver, just not pushing the pedal hard enough. Now this is just a normal set of sim pedals, so there should be absolutely no reason not to be pressing uh, the maximum load. <coughs> In a real racing car and on really high end um, sim racing pedals that replicate real life better, then there's a lot more effort required to press 100%. But it is something that um, you need to train uh, to be able to do because it's just so important. Okay, so that's obvious. Hopefully, that's obvious to you how we got there. So to show you another thing that's, I'm going to overlay some professional racing drivers data. And immediately you can see that our pro driver is nailing 100% each time.
and so you can see like in this first race that our pro driver one is hitting a hundred percent and our sim racer is getting fifty two percent and our pro driver therefore is braking for a lot less time and you can see that on all the traces all our pro drivers traces are a lot narrower in each braking zone meaning he's spending more time at high speed and less time on the brakes but he's getting at least the same amount of energy out of the car trace shape so if we look here we just zoom in a bit more so the yellow is our sort of not amateur driver and the white is our professional driver so like I, as I've said we're only getting just less than 70% for our amateur driver and our pro driver is getting 100% but look also how quickly the brake application is for our pro driver in comparison our pro driver is getting 100% within um, 0 0.5 to So within 15 hundredths of a second, it's going from zero to a maximum 100% braking effort. Whereas our amateur driver, <coughs> down here you can see 33.75 when he hits the brakes and he's not getting his maximum until somewhere here a second later so he's been much more much more gentle on his brake application and not getting the uh, maximum amount of braking so what you've got to think about is a car doing in this case 150 160 miles an hour weighing just over a ton that's got an awful lot of energy at that speed and there is no way you can brake hard enough to lock the tires up when it's got that much energy so you can feel free in those circumstances to push the pedal through the floor as hard as you possibly can for that split second requires to take the majority of the energy initial energy out of the um, car so don't be you know don't be too frightened of hitting the brakes too hard the other thing to look at here that our pro driver is doing is he's modulating the release of the brake pedal and taking a lot longer it's modulating it on and off slightly and this will be as he's turning in so this is the sort of trail braking zone of this corner where's that amateur driver so back in he's using it much more like an on off pedal so when he decides to come off the pedals he's coming off the ped off the brake pedal sorry he's coming off very rapidly and this on a particularly on a front wheel drive car like this or on a car with lots of aero uh, would be really unsettling for the car um, so it's something to it's something that you need to train for because it's it's very diff very di very difficult to modulate the pressure on the brake pedal as you slowly release it it's very easy to be all or nothing so okay that was really what I wanted to show you um, 
a little bit further analysis on this particular lap suggests that this lack of um, braking effort in this particular case is costing him probably about 1.2 to 1.5 seconds a lap so it's, it makes a real big difference um, so like I say once again uh, have a look at your data traces because it's very very common for drivers not to be braking hard enough it's very difficult in a real car to data log um, brake pressure and even when we do in things like uh, some of the series that I work in like British Touring Cars we log the pressure in the um, brake lines but we don't have um, we don't uh, by default have uh, a way of analysing the effort at the pedal so it's easy to overlook it but it is one thing that you should really be looking at obviously in most cars they don't even log uh, brake pressure so you're not going to notice this in your real car another reason why training in a sim is so useful okay so thanks for taking the time to watch the video i hope you enjoyed it I hope you get something out of it obviously please uh, like and subscribe to the channel and click the notification icon so that you get notifications next time i do a video of a similar nature so until then thanks for watching